and then all of a sudden all of these bumps started coming out there's a lot of things in dermatology that we don't know exactly why something happened i wanted to talk about perioral dermatitis because this is something that i have had since I Hey everyone, it's Dr. Park, dermatologist. Welcome back to my channel. And I recently came across two signs that told me that I needed to make a video about perioral dermatitis. One, Haley Bieber posted about her own journey with perioral dermatitis, and we're gonna watch that video together in a moment. And two, I've just had a plethora of patients presenting with perioral dermatitis symptoms in the past couple of weeks. So I thought, this is a sign that I need to go ahead and make a video about perioral dermatitis and just talk about what it is, why we get it, how to treat it, everything you would wanna know about this condition. So let's start off by looking at this video that Haley Bieber posted to her over 12 million followers where she talks about her own journey with perioral dermatitis. So I wanted to talk about perioral dermatitis because this is something that I have had since I was about 19 or 20 and I know a lot of other people deal with it and struggle with it as well. I'm having a pretty bad flare up right now so I wanted to share what I use um, when I'm having a flare up. So at night I use a prescription azelaic acid cream which really helps with the inflammation of the perioral dermatitis. And in the daytime, I use something called clindamycin, which is also a prescription that you can get from a dermatologist. The only other things that I use when I'm having a flare-up of perioral dermatitis would be our road glazing milk. It's super gentle. It helps calm the skin. It doesn't irritate it any further. And this is the next morning after I slept with my prescription and my glazing milk on. I kept it super simple. You can tell it's a lot less irritated and angry. All right, so I think it's really great that Haley is so transparent about her own struggles with skin because she's someone who's known for having really beautiful skin and she has her own skincare line and she always looks so beautiful, polished and airbrushed in all the magazines and on social media. So I think it's really brave of her to talk about some of her own struggles with perioral dermatitis and I think a lot of us can relate. So kudos to her for talking about it. So perioral dermatitis, what is it? It is an inflammatory condition that basically causes red bumps and scaling and burning in this triangle distribution around your nose. So it doesn't actually cause that many papules or bumps on the nose, but it's in this area where you can get it along your nasolabial folds, your upper and lower cutaneous lip, and all around your chin, and maybe sometimes even on your medial cheeks here as well. And sometimes people can even experience these symptoms around their eyes too, in which case that's called periorificial derm instead of just perioral dermatitis. We don't know exactly why it happens, which I know is so frustrating. There's a lot of things in dermatology that we don't know exactly why something happens. It mostly occurs in women ages 18 to 40, so also that perfect age range to have acne, hormonal acne as well. So sometimes it can be a little bit hard to figure out which condition you have. But in the case of perioral dermatitis, it really occurs in this tight distribution right around here. I call it like the triangle distribution around the nose. We know that there are certain triggers that can make perioral dermatitis worse or even cause it to happen. One clear trigger that we've found is topical steroid exposure it can really cause perioral dermatitis to flare and even to trigger it in people who have not experienced perioral derm before. A pretty common scenario that I find is that a patient of mine will come in, they will have had a rash previously in the past, which they treated with topical steroids, either over the counter or a prescription from their doctor. And they just continued using topical steroid in this area for quite some time. And then all of a sudden, all of these bumps started coming out and they thought it was acne. So they kind of used some over-the-counter acne products and it didn't get better. And then that's how they end up seeing me. It's a really common story that a patient uses topical steroids for some time and then it triggers the perioral dermatitis to come out. So number one, very, very important is to stop using the topical steroid. That's really important. Step number one. Another trigger that we see sometimes is fluorinated toothpaste. So the fluoride in toothpaste that really helps protect your teeth can sometimes be an irritant and cause perioral dermatitis to flare. For that case, I usually recommend my patients with stubborn perioral dermatitis to switch to using a non-fluorinated toothpaste or to always, always, and you should do this anyways, to brush your teeth first 
first and then wash your face so that you make sure that you're getting all that toothpaste residue off from around your mouth and your face. In terms of other treatments for perioral dermatitis, my treatment of choice is oral doxycycline or some other antibiotic in the tetracycline family, and that's twice a day for one to two months. It really is that you need a longer course of the antibiotics in order to really kick this in the butt because I have found too often that if you use a shorter course, the perioral dermatitis will get better, but then once you come off of the antibiotics, it'll just come right back and then we're back to square one. So it's really important just to treat it, treat it well, treat it with the full course of the antibiotics to really nip it in the bud. The oral antibiotics are only one part of the picture. We also want to pair that with topical medications. Like Haley mentioned in her video, I do recommend using a topical prescription strength azelaic acid. Azelaic acid has wonderful anti-inflammatory properties and we use it a lot for rosacea, perioral dermatitis, and it's actually a really great treatment for acne in pregnant patients, patients who can't use a lot of the other medications that we use for acne. Azelaic acid is found in a whole host of over-the-counter products. A few that I can think of off the top of my head are like the Naturium Azelaic Acid or the Paula's Choice Azelaic Acid Serum. These are all great options if you want to start with over-the-counter options. However, for anyone with more severe perioral dermatitis or if it's just not getting better, I do recommend speaking to a dermatologist and we can prescribe higher strength azelaic acid, even up to 20% azelaic acid. And that can be really helpful helpful for combating the redness and the inflammation that is triggering and driving along the perioral dermatitis. Secondly, you can use a topical antibiotic. So Haley mentioned in her video that she uses a topical clindamycin. Topical clindamycin is an ingredient that we often use for acne, and you can see why in perioral dermatitis it might be helpful as well, because it can help cut down on any bacteria that might be contributing to this skin condition. It comes as a lotion, it comes as a solution, and it can come as a gel. Oftentimes for my patients, I even compound medications together. So there are treatments where I put together tretinoin, clindamycin, niacinamide, azelaic acid, and I put it all together. Your dermatologist can prescribe them separately, or she can even make custom compounded medications where she puts many combos of them together in a specially curated medication for you. In terms of your skincare routine when you're healing from perioral dermatitis, I generally recommend patients to just keep it simple and very, very minimal and to cut back on any actives that might be irritating your skin. Because when you have this perioral dermatitis, your skin is very inflamed, it's sensitive, and so ingredients that you may be able to tolerate normally you might not be able to tolerate right now. Examples of these actives could include AHAs or BHAs, so actives like acids, tretinoin or retinol. Definitely not recommending using any peels. I also recommend not really starting a whole bunch of new products when you're dealing with perioral dermatitis because that can really complicate the picture. It can kind of muddy the waters where we're not really sure if your reaction is from the perioral dermatitis itself or if it's so much worse because of this new medication or this new topical ingredient or a new skincare product that you started. So I would say just to cut back on everything, take a break from starting new products, really give your skin gentle TLC while it's healing. And then with the help of a dermatologist, you can get over this period of this flare with the perioral dermatitis, and then you can start adding actives and new products back into your routine. So I hope this was helpful for you. It was a really quick overview of perioral dermatitis, what to avoid, what to use, and what to talk to your dermatologist about. If there are other conditions that you would like me to cover, please drop a comment below. Let me know what's on your mind. And as usual, thanks for watching. Until next time.